Hi, this video builds on the previous one, Box Plots with Statistical Details. So if you haven't seen this one, I highly recommend to check it out first. In this video, you learn how to conduct the most important statistical tests and visualize them on top of informative box violin plots in a simple, intuitive R syntax. Particularly, you learn how to do students and Welsh test, Man Whitney test, Fishers and Welsh ANOVA, and Kruskal Wallis tests, like the one you see on the screen right now. You'll also learn how to choose a correct test by checking assumptions in R with Shapiro Wilk normality test and Levine's homogeneity of variances test. Last but not least, you will be able to get a correct post hoc analysis for ANOVA and Kruskal Wallis with p values corrected for multiple comparisons. If you don't know what post hoc and p value corrections are, no worries, I'll briefly explain it. So, this video is not only about simple R code, but also about learning statistics by doing. Let's get right into it. In the previous video on box plots, I promised you to show how to produce a very fancy box violin plot with statistical details in only one line of code. Here is this line. And here is the result of it. What do we see here? Well, first of all, we see only three arguments in this line of code. The data. This is just part of a dataset which shows how it should look like in your Excel table. The X argument describes the X axis on the plot, which in our case have two different groups, which we want to compare, namely industrial workers on the left and IT workers on the right. And the Y argument, which describes the Y axis on the plot and shows what exactly will be compared between these groups, namely their salaries. Secondly, on the plot we see the number of observations in the whole dataset and in every group, the box plots with five number summary in the interquartile range, the medians as a thick horizontal line and the mean as a big red dot, we see the violent plots displaying the distribution on the data inside of every group. The results of a statistical group's comparison providing not only p-value, which shows whether there is a significant difference between these groups, but also the name of the test which produced this p-value. And the effect size with its confidence intervals. It even provides some Bayesian statistics at the bottom of the plot, which is way outside of the scope of this video and will not be treated here. So you see that having only three intuitive arguments, data, x and y, we get a pretty informative plot. Great, isn't it? Yes, but uh, where is the catch? How is it even possible to have so much useful stuff with so little work? The answer lies in the GD between stats function, so let's have a closer look at it. The GD between stats function comes from the GD stats plot library. A library, sometimes called a package, is a collection of functions, or as I like to see it, a vocabulary, which, if learned, allows you to understand the story your data is telling you. The ggstats plot library was created by Mr. Patil and is one of my absolute favorite packages, which I use every day. This library is based on the famous and probably the most powerful data visualization library out there, ggplot2. This explains the gg part of the function. The between part measures the similarity between independent samples and the stats part is kind of self-explanatory. So you see that by adding statistical details, Mr. Patil took already useful ggplot2 visualization to a whole new level. Needless to say, we have to install the package once before using it. 
We can make our code more digestive by using a single argument in a single line of code. So the power of this package and at the same time the catch is that it makes all these things for you by default. And this is where we have to be careful because using the defaults all the time might lead to a wrong test. For instance, one of such defaults for comparing two groups is that the variances of two groups are rarely similar, where variance is simply the spread of the values in each group. So the GD between stats assumes unequal variance by default, which results in a Welsh T test, which we can see in the title of the plot instead of the student's t-test, which would be applied if variances of both groups were similar. We see that the values of the group on the right vary a bit more than the values of the group on the left, so their variances kind of differ, and Welsh t-test seems to be correct. But do variances differ significantly? Well, we can use the Levine's test from CAR package to answer this question. The test assumes that samples have similar variances, that's the null hypothesis, and a p-value below 005 would reject this hypothesis and would mean that samples have different variances. A p-value over 005 like in our case, tells us that variances are similar. Fortunately, we can override the default argument var equal false through the var equals true, which will result in the student t test instead of the Welsh t test. So, in this way, we came a little closer to the truth. Another important default is that the data is normally distributed. That's why the result displays a parametric test in the first place. However, by providing the violent plots and the means, which might be far from the medians, this package already gives us some intuition about the distribution of each group. Particularly, the group on the left seems to be normally distributed, because the violin plot looks vertically symmetric, like a bell. In contrast, the group on the right does not look symmetric at all, so that we have to check the normality of the data inside of each group in order to be sure we use a correct test. The Shapiro-Wilk normality test helps us with that. For instance, it takes the salary of only sample on the left and produces a p-value, which checks whether the data is normally distributed or not. The test assumes that data is normally distributed. That's the null hypothesis. And the p-value over 005 does not allow us to reject the null hypothesis. So we have to conclude that the data is normally distributed. The p-value of the second sample is under 005, so that we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the data is not normally distributed. Now, if both groups would be normally distributed, we would need a parametric test, which compare means as the most representative number. This makes sense since the mean is in the widest part of the violin of the left. However, the mean would not be in the widest part of the violin on the right, which would make the mean not the most representative number of the group. The median in this case is much more representative. This is why we need a non-parametric test which would take medians for groups comparison instead of means. If you wonder why do we need parametric tests at all, if the medians are always the most representative number for the sample regarding the distribution, the answer is that parametric tests are believed to be a bit more powerful, which helps to not to miss any discovery, if there is one. So both parametric and non-parametric tests are important. GG between stats allows us to determine the type of the test using a single argument.
type equal p for parametric test or type equal np for non-parametric it really couldn't be simpler than that the package even tells you the name of your non-parametric test man whitney in our case by the way you don't need to check the variance for the non-parametric test so the argument var equal is not necessary and will be ignored now the variable job class on the x-axis allowed us to compare two groups what if we had more than two groups let's change only one word in our code and see what happens suddenly we get completely different and more complex statistical tests why is that the only difference between this variable is the number of groups. Job class has only two groups, which require t-test or Mann-Whitney test, while education has more than two groups and requires ANOVA or kruskal wallis And the ggstat plot package knows it. Here, the author beautifully showed that these differently named tests all do the same thing compare groups. I couldn't agree more and I have talked about it in my very first video on this channel, Introduction to Statistics. But why do we have even more p-values now? Well, the p-value of the kruskal wallis only says whether there is a difference between groups or not, but it does not say between which groups. That is why we have to pairwisely compare all the groups between each other, which is then called a post hoc analysis. With three groups, we have three pairs and therefore three new p values. Now, why are p values somehow corrected? The answer lies in the nature of data. We simply cannot collect all the data in the world, we only have a very small part of it. For instance, we only have salaries of 30 people in each group. So, you can imagine that our sample might simply be somehow biased or not too representative for the whole group. This leads to a small probability that results of the test are wrong. And that's okay, we can live with that. However, when we do a second test, we also have a small probability that it's wrong. Hmm, these two small probabilities add up to a slightly bigger probability that one of the tests is wrong. And if we take 20 tests, it is statistically guaranteed that one of them will be wrong. So now, Imagine all of these 20 tests will be significant. One of them, the wrong one, will deliver a false discovery. Thus, in order to reduce the probability of false discovery, we make p-values needed for significant results lower than 0, 0.05. And that is why we see the whole corrected p-values on the plot. You are probably more familiar with the von Ferroni corrected values, but both Ferroni is known to be very conservative, and as you can see, we only have two significant differences instead of one. So we have just missed a potentially important discovery, namely that with a college degree you learn significantly less than with a university education or a PhD degree. Thus, I'd recommend following the default of the package, namely Holm correction, or to use the Benjamin and Hochberg correction, because it reduces the false discovery rate better than Bonferroni. That is why you see FDR corrected values on the plot. Moreover, the GG between stats automatically determines the kind of pairwise test which fits the main test. Particularly, it is the Dunn post hoc tests after Kruskal Wallis, Students T test after Fisher's ANOVA, and Games Howell test after Welsh ANOVA. And the beauty of this is, you only have to think about the main test. The post hoc tests will be determined automatically. Since we're often interested in only significant results, only they are displayed by default. 
However, we can override this and display only non-significant p-values or even all of them. We can display the notch, which shows 95% confidence intervals of the medians and many more other parameters, which I'd rather show in an extra video as a quick R demo. And I would recommend to check out this demo and start coding right away. You won't regret it. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for learning.